Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Publisher V2. And in this video, I want to talk about setting up margins for any projects that you may want to print at home and why it's important to get it right. So if we look at the screen in front of you, you can see that I've created myself a surgery planner. And as you can see, I have a certain size margin over here on the left hand side, as well as over on the right, a slightly bigger one in the middle and one on the top and the bottom. And the reason you want to go ahead and set yourself your margins is because every single home printer will have a default margin built in which you can't go ahead and turn off. So it's important to account for those default margins when you go ahead and set up your document. So what I'm going to do first is just go ahead and turn my margins on so you guys can see them. And these margins are going to be this blue line that we have coming around our document. And you can see all of my content is inside of this margin. So what would generally happen if our content was outside of the margin, just like that? When you come to print your page, if I just zoom in, then what's going to happen is your printer is going to automatically cut off this section right here. So if you've got anything overlapping the margin right there, it's going to be cut off. So with this design right here, there may not make much difference with that. You may not notice it. However, if you do have text which is slightly outside of the margin, then that will cut off the edge of the text. So I'm just going to zoom back out with Command or Control Zero to fit to screen. And we'll talk about how we can go ahead and set this up. So before doing that, I just want to head over to my master pages and just double tap on that to get into here. And I'm just going to come over to my layers. And I'm going to turn on these two layers that I've got right there. And what I've done this for is to account for my binding machine. As this project right here, I have printed and binded it. And what I tend to use this for is just kind of a visual representation to make sure that none of my content interferes with the binding holes. So if I go back onto that original document, fit that to screen, you can now see that I've made sure my margin avoids cutting into these holes as well. So I'm just going to grab this content and drag that back inside of the margin and just turn these margins off. Then that really should be how it would look once it's been printed and binded. You've just got to imagine these holes as being cut out once you go ahead and print that. So because I put these holes onto my master page, you can see that's copied across every single document page that I have down here, which is going to make it a lot easier when we come to design on each individual page, just to make sure that we don't interfere with any of the holes and keep it looking professional. And of course, at the end of this, what is going to be important is that you go back to your master pages and you just go ahead and turn those layers off. And then you can see that's going to update across every one of these down here. So what you see here is what we're going to get when we go ahead and print that. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about how we set up our margins for our project. So what we're going to do first of all is go up to the top menu bar on the left hand side. We're going to select file and we're going to choose new. Then inside of here, it's a case of just choosing the document size that you would like to work with. So we'll go ahead and just select that one. And what I want to make sure that you do as well as make sure that you are on the press ready, because you're going to have a couple of different options in here. One says print and one says press ready. And essentially they're exactly the same thing. The only difference with both of these is going to be the color format. So once we are on the press ready, as you can see down here, our color is CMYK. And this is really important when printing that you always want to be in CMYK. However, if we choose the A5 up on the print section, you can now see that's changed to RGB. And RGB is more commonly used when you're creating for web or device. Whereas CMYK is going to represent the colors that come out of your printer. So it's really important just to make sure that you are on that CMYK color profile. So moving on, we'll just quickly set this up. So we'll go over to layout and all you really need to make sure that you do in here is have your DPI set to 300 as that is going to be the industry standard when you come to print that will give you the best quality. Then we're going to select our pages tab. Then inside of here, we want to turn on facing pages and the number of pages you want is going to be free. Just as a starting point, we can add more to this later on. And the reason I want you to choose free is if we just pay attention to the left hand side, you can see page one is going to be the single page and page two and three is going to give us that double spread. And just like I said before, with your color profile, you want to make sure that you are on CMYK if you do intend to print. Then with our margins at the moment, I'm going to ignore this one inside of here. So I'm going to turn that off 
as we're going to set these up a different way in just a moment. Then finally with the bleed, if you guys intend on printing borderless where you want your image to go from one edge of the paper all the way to the other, then you want to account for that three millimeter bleed. As 3mm is also the industry standard if you want a full page print. However, I do want to mention that it is possible on some home printers to print borderless. But in 99% of cases, you can only print borderless on an A4 size piece of paper and nothing smaller than that. So with all of that out of the way and our documents set up, all we've got to do is go ahead and hit create. And now you can see that we have our first page and our two page spread, which I talked about a moment ago. So what we're going to do now is make our way up to the top master pages panel and inside of here we're going to double tap on the master A and what we want to do is apply our margins to be on our master that way it's going to apply them same margins across every page that we create down here meaning our design will stay consistent all the way through our project. So with our master A selected what we need to do now is go up to where it says document setup on the top left hand corner. Then in our dimensions, just go ahead and leave this the way it is on spread. But what we need to do is go over to margins and we'll go ahead and turn these on. So as I stated at the beginning of the video, every home printer is going to have default margins built in. And most of the time you can find those default margins in your instruction manual or somewhere on the manufacturer website. For me, I use a Canon printer. And for me, on the inner margin, which is going to be from the center inwards right here, that is a default on my printer at 3.5 millimeter, which is also the same on the outer page. So if I was to create a single page like I've got here on page one, then I would have 3.5 on the inner and 3.5 on the outer. However, because I want to account for my binding holes, the inner margin needs to be slightly bigger than that. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the outer and I'm going to put that at either 3.5 millimeter, which is going to be my minimum margin that I can go to. But because I like to be a little bit safer just to make sure that nothing does get cut off, I always add that a little bit extra. So I will add five mil, so an extra 1.5. Then I also know my top margin is also at 3.5, but just to be safe again, I'll go ahead and I'll use 5mm on that one too. And with the bottom one, that is slightly bigger. And my bottom margin, I think default is around 5mm, but because I like to be a little bit safe there too, I'll go ahead and just add 7 so of course you are welcome to keep all of these numbers at your minimum margin size. However, I do recommend just adding a couple more mil just to be safe. So what we're going to do next is at the moment, we're going to ignore this inner and we'll come back to that in just a moment. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and we'll go and turn our margins on with this button up here on the top menu bar, which says toggle preview mode. And as you can see at the moment, we are now set up over here on the left hand side, the top and the bottom and over on the right and the top and the bottom. We have nothing in the center here because we haven't applied that yet. And the reason I haven't applied this yet is because we want to account for either having a spine in the middle if you're going to create yourself a book or in my case, if you want to put some binding holes here. And the way I'm going to figure out the perfect margin size for the center is by going over to Amazon, which is where I purchased my binder from. And this is the one that I've purchased. And if any of you guys are interested in this binder, I will leave the link in the description. So what I want to do inside of here is just make my way down towards the bottom of the page. And you can see right here, we have some information which is going to be really useful. Starting off with the different margin sizes that we can have here, which is going to be how close to the edge of the page it is. So typically I will use that three mil right there. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. What we want to pay attention to first of all is going to be the size of our holes, which is right here. And that is a four mil by four mil. So going back over to Affinity Publisher, what I'm going to do first of all is go ahead and grab myself a square over on the left hand side toolbar menu. I'm just going to drag this out. And if we pay attention to the width and the height, all we've got to do is set that by four and then four on the height as well, just like that. Then we are left with a four mil square. Then what I'm going to do is just move it up here over to the center and just let that snap. And this is what we're going to use as our visual guide. So what I want to do is just duplicate this all the way down the page. So it kind of looks as though we have the binding holes. So if we hit command or control C to copy and command or control J to duplicate, 
What we're gonna do is just slightly drag one of these down from the other. I'll put that around three mil and I'll go ahead and hit Command or Control J. That then will duplicate that exact same spacing all the way down to the bottom of the page. Just keep pushing Command or Control J. Then what I'm gonna do next is select all of these just by dragging my mouse over all of those. And I'm gonna group those together with Command or Control G. Then I'm just gonna move this to snap into the middle of the page using that red center line right there. And if I just toggle off the preview mode, you can see this is what we've got at the moment. So what we need to do now is just bring these over to roughly where they need to be, which is going to be three millimeter away from the center line. So what I'm gonna do once again is go and grab myself a rectangle and I'm just gonna size this out to be the width of three millimeter. It really doesn't matter on the height, that can be anything you like. We just need that three millimeter width. Then we'll go ahead and bring this over to the center and let that snap on the center line just like that. Then we'll go ahead and grab our group, which is going to be our binding holes. We'll pull this over and we'll just snap that over to that three mil one that we just created, dragging that back in the center. And now that is positioned perfectly where we need it. What we're gonna do next is grab this three mil piece again. We're gonna now drag that over to the other side and let that snap into the middle section. Then we're gonna make a copy of our group that we just created with Command or Control C. Then we'll hit Command or Control V to paste. And we'll just drag that over to the other side and let that snap on the end of that three mil piece. And then we'll go ahead and just delete that three mil piece as we no longer need it. And now right here, we have our three millimeter as well as our additional four that we need for the holes on both sides of this. Then what we need to do next is just allow a little bit more space from where your content ends to where the holes are, just to make sure that nothing gets cut off with your holes. And I think the three mil space that we have right here from the edge of this hole over to the center is gonna be a really good size. So I'll go ahead and add three mil on this side as well. So we need a total of 10 mil on the inner. Then that is going to clear our margin on the outside, our punch hole, as well as an additional three mil before our content starts. So going back up to our document setup, back over to our margins. And all we're gonna do now is change our inner to be 10 mil keeping the rest of them the way we originally set that. If you wanna change the color of your lines, you can do that right here. However, I just keep them in the default blue. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. And now you can see what we got here. We now have room for our binding holes as well as a margin on both sides of the paper. And now when we come to start creating our document, inside of this blue area right here is always gonna be our save zone. And we know nothing is gonna get cut off inside of these margin lines. And just like I said before, because we set these margins on our master page, if we come down to our pages and we create more pages down here, just add an additional two pages, you can see that it's copied the exact same margins across these new pages as well. And we also have our visual representation of our binding holes right here. And of course, like I said at the beginning of this, just go ahead and make sure that you do come back into your master pages and you just disable these in your layers panel before you go ahead and print that. And then once we go back onto this, you're gonna have your design inside of your margins. And then everything should come out perfect when you go to print your project. And this is very much the same process if you had a spine and you're creating a book with a hard cover or a soft cover rather than binding this. You just kind of need to figure out how much of a margin you want between your spine and the end of your content but it really is as easy as that. But that is it for now in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and I will see you in the next one.